Armando is just one of those people, I guess, where when, if, you, if he wants to work with you, I guess you just have to kind of say yes and you can worry about the role afterwards. Yes. I met him for tea and, uh, and said, uh, I'll do it. And, I, and then I said, you just make up your mind. And yeah, I, uh, I, no, there was no question. I, my, I, no two minds for me either. He sent me a note saying, would you like to be Molotov in the Death of Stalin? I said, yes. I didn't even know whether it was a musical <laughs> or on ice or whatever. I just said, Armando, you new cheap. That's good enough for me. Molotov on ice, that could, that could work, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the sequel. Um, did you guys have any reassurances right from the offset that you wouldn't have to be putting on any accents? Was that something that you were told quite early? I don't remember it, I don't remember it being raised when I was talking to Amanda originally, but then I did think perhaps we should be consistent. I, I didn't think we'd be mm. doing Russian accents, but I thought we might have to be consistent. And then he said, oh, no, yeah. actually, you know, Stalin mm. and um, Beria, come, my, my character, come from the same part of the world. And I thought well, perhaps they should talk the same with the same accent, but he said no. I don't think he was yeah. particularly concerned about that. I, I learnt it with a Russian accent, you know, and then I thought, oh did dear. You? Well, yes, yes, oh. I did. Uh, but then I, I thought, well, if we all talk like this, it's going to sound like a comedy sketch. People are like this. We're all going to sound the same, you know? <laughs> and the great thing about just letting us use our own voices, it, it made all the characters more distinctive and it made you think about what they were saying a little more. So it also doesn't I was seem rather to be, relieved. It doesn't seem to be an issue. Um, I mean, I don't know whether it is as, as a, a first-time viewer, but it doesn't worry me at all now, so I just... Mm. I or me. <laughs> so there we are, we're absolutely in unison that. We'll <laughs> nod together. Yes, very good. And because, I mean, obviously, what, what Armando's doing mm. here is he's, he's blending comedy and tragedy on the, on the finest of lines, and it could so easily go wrong. I mean, but again, with, with, when you have got someone like him behind it, I mean, that must be a real reassurance that he's going to get that balance OK, because, I mean, it is one of those, mm. those projects that, left in the wrong hands, it could just be a complete disaster. He was very mm. concerned about mm. that. He kept on saying, you know, this is a very serious subject, actually, and that we must always remember these people caused a lot of pain. So yeah. I don't think we ever forgot that. I thought that was what made it different from any other film I've ever been sort of offered or, or even seen, you know, was that they managed to get the two sides of it. And it, it doesn't really avoid the issues that they did kill people and there were summary executions and all that. But, you know, it's about power and it's about, you know, um, ruthless people trying to stay in power. And they do pretty horrible things. At the same time, you know, it is comic. The, the, the way, they, the little dance they do to try and take over from Stalin and all that is like children in a school ground again. I mean, they are just all so horrible. That must have given you so much sort of fun to play around with on set that you're all just inhabiting these just nasty Well, I, I actually thought Molotov was rather... Quite, quite enjoyed Molotov, really, and, and he wasn't... He's the nicest one, isn't he? But he's an incredibly nice. ruthless man. He's yes. sort of ordered the execution of millions of people. But he is rather... Yes, in the film, he's become... He, he's, he's been put down by Stalin and, and bullied, but then he suddenly bounces back and decides to burn barriers. is the best yeah. thing to do. Well, because actually, they don't, they don't discuss policy. Do they? What Amanda's interested in, no. as you say, is about power struggles yeah. and about the absurdity of people in that situation. So oddly, I think that's probably probably why it works, is that he's not talking about no. Stalinist policy. They're talking just about men, mostly men, yeah. struggling with each other to gain absolute powers. Uh, and yet there is a sort of procedure they have to follow. So you've got this ridiculous comic dance, but it's all sort of governed by, yep, you've got to do it in the right way. Yes. You've got to, uh, motion has to be passed and all that. But some of the funniest scenes yeah, are yeah. when we're doing About the voting. bureaucracy. Yeah. Yes, voting. Yeah. Do you think that, it, I mean, that the, the current kind of Trump regime could be open to this sort of similar parody in about 50 years' time? Or, I mean, do you think it could take that sort of time probably of us to have recovered from what, all the damage he caused? Well, I mean, yes, of course. Years. In 50 years. <laughs> I could probably do something about Trump now, but, I mean... It's a, it's a different issue. I mean, this is Russia and America. It's about, I suppose, it's about people hanging on to power by all means. It's pretty power. universal, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you can look closer to home about power struggles at the top. Um, and it seems to be that that's applicable right through history, isn't it? And in most countries in the world, well, yeah. to be honest, yeah. really. Yeah. Um, but it was just on the... Uh, in Russia, it was the scale, really, of the procedure. And the consequences. Yeah, yeah, that's right, for the world. Mm. Brilliant. Thanks so much for your time today, guys. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey! hey.